While SpaceX was building and testing more than 600 Raptor engines inside a single unified production chain, NASA and Boeing were burning $93 billion on a rocket that flies once every few years, and Blue Origin was still trying to get the BE-4 out the door without falling behind yet again. They said the old way of building rocket engines was perfect, insisting that you couldn't move fast, couldn't risk failure, and certainly couldn't test aggressively. And then reality hit them in the face, SpaceX melted 50 combustion chambers, blew up 20 engines, and sacrificed hundreds of prototypes, yet still outran every legacy program in the country by years. How much time do you think they wasted trying to avoid the very failures that made SpaceX unstoppable? This is the real truth they don't want you to know. SpaceX tested more engines to destruction than other programs built in total. While Old Space protected hardware like it was sacred, SpaceX treated engines like ammunition, build them fast, test them hard, and fly the survivors. And that is precisely why Raptor is years ahead of BE-4, Starliner, SLS, and every Chinese methane engine combined. First mistake, NASA contractors thought hardware was precious. Second mistake, they thought testing was dangerous. Third mistake, they believed speed in aerospace was reckless. They failed to grasp the simple competitive truth that the fastest way to a safe engine is through rapid, high volume destruction. While SpaceX was running one static fire after another, pouring engines into test stands like a factory stress test, the experts kept repeating the same failed line. You can't do that, and they wasted billions proving themselves wrong with numbers the mainstream media refuses to show you. The SLS costs $4.1 billion per launch, while Starship is projected to achieve orbits for around $10 million. This contrast isn't just about cost, it's about a foundational corruption of the engineering process itself, where the incentive is to spend, not to succeed. Your tax dollars paid for this staggering inefficiency subsidizing a system that prioritizes vendor profits over mission results. At Blue Origin, the BE-4 engine program struggled for nearly a decade with combustion instability, supply chain delays, and turbo pump issues, slipping the New Glenn schedule year after year. This single engine delay is why the entire program has fallen eight years behind original projections, while the SpaceX Raptor engine is six years ahead of what critics predicted was even possible for a large reusable engine. Blue Origin almost caught the problem early. If only one engineer had been listened to during a critical design review, they might have avoided years of costly rework. The solution was reportedly sitting on someone's desk, an elegant, simple fix ignored by those who clung to the slow, old way of doing business, which is incapable of the 40 flights completed by Falcon 9 boosters that run on an earlier, less powerful engine design. This isn't just delay, it's systemic stagnation. The core difference is technical superiority rooted in manufacturing philosophy. SpaceX leveraged advanced additive manufacturing, 3D metal printing, to tear entire layers out of the production timeline. A single printed structure replaced parts that once required five suppliers, three machining shops, and multiple inspection phases. No waiting, no excuses, no paperwork. Because 85% of Starship and Raptor production is done internally, Finally, SpaceX can redesign a subsystem one day, print it the next, and test it that same week. Meanwhile, Boeing spent years debugging Starliner software that nearly stranded astronauts, with NASA Inspector General reports exposing hundreds of critical bugs. This is the ultimate vindication. While the legacy system created a maze of vendors, delays, and cost overruns, SpaceX proved that vertical integration is the only way to achieve the scale and speed required for deep space missions. They ignored the warnings about the fragility of their 
distributed supply chain, and that vulnerability became SpaceX's greatest competitive weapon. The consequence of this failure is not just domestic waste, it is a profound threat to national security, giving ground to the competition. While the U.S. system was busy rewarding failure, Russia's share of the global launch market dropped to under 3%, while SpaceX now dominates over 90% of the commercial sector. Even worse, the institutional inertia in the U.S. has allowed China to target a crude lunar landing by 2030, a direct competitive response made possible by the delays of the SLS program. The Chinese are actively racing to catch Starship before 2030, unveiling methane engines clearly inspired by Raptor. This isn't just a friendly race, it's a strategic loss of position caused by government bureaucracy prioritizing corporate profits over competitive advantage. The media won't tell you this, but the numbers prove we're losing the race right now, not because of a lack of talent, but because of a catastrophic failure in execution. The humiliation is delivered through congressional testimony and canceled contracts. The staggering cost of the SLS program, $93 billion, was justified by claims that it was the only reliable path to deep space, yet it flies once every few years, an unsustainable pace that has already cost NASA valuable exploration contracts now being serviced by Falcon Heavy. The ultimate consequence of this institutional failure is that the government is forced to pay a competitor to fix the vacuum created by its own failed programs. Internal reports revealed that managers knew the system would fail, knew their supply chains were breaking, and knew their testing cadence was dangerously slow. This wasn't an honest mistake. It was an act of arrogance, clinging to a failed model even after the evidence was overwhelming. Finally, the truth comes out. The old institutions were willing to sacrifice competitive edge to preserve the status quo. Now, here's where the outrage builds. They absolutely refuse to learn the most crucial lesson of all. That high volume failure is the prerequisite for high volume success. Inside certain NASA teams, engineers knew this would fail when they saw SpaceX's engine output rising and BE-4 slipping. They raised alarms. If SpaceX can mass produce engines at this rate, legacy supply chains will collapse. They were overruled and told that engines didn't need to be fast because NASA isn't competing. They ignored the warnings from their own people, allowing institutional pride to trump operational reality. This is the definitive pattern of institutional failure. When data conflicts with dogma, they censor the data. This failure pattern results in staggering hidden costs. Beyond the $4.1 billion per launch for SLS, the actual price includes the billions in lost opportunity, the cost of redesigning components that failed after years of development, and the massive overhead of managing a vendor maze that actively works against efficiency. While the old system struggled, SpaceX achieved a production goal of one Raptor engine per day. This comparison is not just about dollars, it's about the philosophy of value. While they wasted billions on endless reviews and paperwork, SpaceX reduced the cost of access to space by orders of magnitude, a revolution that benefits everyone except the corporate lobbyists funding the incumbent system. The true moment of technical superiority arrived with Raptor 2, which became the majority of all 600 plus engines produced. A clean, simplified design, higher thrust, fewer parts, lower cost, and optimized manufacturability. Legacy builders clung to their slow, handcrafted cycles, convinced rapid production creates defects, but reality exposed them. Statistical reliability models prove that high volume production with tight process control actually improves reliability. They argued about Raptor 1's flaws while SpaceX had already moved on to Raptor 3, which is a leap in both performance and manufacturability that they haven't even begun to study. The solution was sitting ignored on a desk, simplicity and speed. 
This ongoing iteration is the engine of competitive superiority, a cycle that the old space establishment is incapable of replicating. This acceleration meant that SpaceX was flying test engines, not just ground hardware, on actual flight vehicles. On the very first integrated Starship flight in 2023, every one of the 33 booster engines and six ship engines was flight quality, proving the system worked even as some shut down early. They are still testing the basic functionality of the SLS core stage while Starship has completed multiple full-stack flight attempts. The timeline gap isn't just in years, it's in a generation of operational experience. Hundreds of Raptors never even left the ground, used only for failure analysis, destructive testing, and reusability experiments. Old Space considered engine loss a disaster. SpaceX considered it data. Most people don't know that less than 40% of those 600 engines have flown, yet they still dominate the market. Musk called this years ago, the real achievement was building the factory that builds the engine. NASA shrugged, Boeing ignored it, and Blue Origin underestimated it. They said a single unified production process was too risky, but it was their complex outsourced approach that proved fatal. The result is simple. China is not copying NASA's SLS, they are copying Raptor. They steal because they can't keep up trying to close a massive competitive gap. This is the true moral dynamic. Innovation defeating bureaucracy and truth defeating lies. The only reason the reason we are not hopelessly behind is because a private company was willing to risk total failure to prove that the government's approach was fundamentally broken. Wait until you hear what happened next because we are now entering the phase of ultimate judgment. The jackpot cluster that validates everything you suspected. Bang one. Cost gap confirmed. The cost difference of $4.1 billion per launch versus 10 million is the number they tried hardest to bury. It is a staggering monument to government waste and contracting abuse. This echoes the Soviet N-1 moon rocket failure where billions were spent on a rocket that never worked, not because the engineers were bad, but because the system forced them to build something their factories could not produce. The failure was structural, not technical. Bang 2. Cover-up revealed. Boeing took $5 billion for Starliner and delivered a capsule with over 1,000 software bugs. NASA IG reports concealed key risk findings for months, revealing that astronauts were only 30 seconds from disaster in the 2019 flight test. They claimed slow meant safe, but slow really meant blind allowing defects to hide for years while SpaceX's rapid reuse generated real durability data. This is what they hid. Bang 3. Competition threat fully exposed. China targeting 2030 is not just a date, it's a warning shot fired while the US system is still struggling with single launch reliability. The $93 billion program is being challenged by a nation that has chosen to aggressively mirror the proven success of private innovation, proving that they recognize competitive superiority even if US institutions do not. Bang 4. The factory verdict. The 600 Raptors isn't a statistic. It's a verdict. It is the final, undeniable proof that SpaceX has effectively built the world's first reusable rocket assembly line, while Old Space is still reviewing documentation. This sheer volume of production is what makes Starship something they can never replicate. Every Raptor sitting unused is acceleration. Every Raptor is a blunt reminder that SpaceX is doing what the old world thought was impossible. Building rockets at the scale required for a true spacefaring civilization. This is the ultimate vindication. Reality rewards good engineering. Reality punishes bureaucracy. SpaceX proved them all wrong by failing fast and learning faster. But here is the ongoing threat you need to know. They are still doing it. NASA is still paying billions into legacy programs. Boeing is still fixing Starliner bugs. Blue Origin is still behind schedule. Congress is still funding slow, fragile systems that guarantee higher costs and slower progress. The waste continues. The China threat advances. The problem is not fixed, and they're making the same mistake right now with the very next program. The truth is out, but the fight against 
institutional inertia is far from over.